<laughs> Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. I'm Kate Moody. My guest today is Caroline Codsey, founder and president of Women in Governance, a Canadian nonprofit organization uh, set up in 2010 to help encourage women to advance their careers and their leadership skills. Thanks so much for being with us on France 24. Thank you, Kate. Now, you're in Paris to attend the Women's Forum. This year's meeting is all about inclusion. What message are you bringing and what are you hoping to hear? So I'm very excited to be at the Women's Forum. It's my fifth year working with them. I've uh, spoken with the Women's Forum in different countries in the world because, as you know, they're a global organization. And uh, the panel I'll be leading... Um, at the Women's Forum this week is around legislation and uh, what countries can do to have more women sit on corporate boards. Uh, as you know, both Canada and the United States don't have any quotas for, uh, for, for women on boards, but France with the Loi Copé-Zimmermann, they've been very successful. They've got 40% of women on corporate boards, which is more than double of what we have in Canada. So this will be the topic of discussion there. Now, you've spoken about the systematic bias that leads to fewer women in higher paid or more powerful positions, uh, but you've also addressed individual traits like a lack of self-confidence mm -hmm. that can hold women back. How do you tackle that? Surely it's something that has to be tackled from a very young age. Absolutely. It's very hard when women are already in the corporate world and they've already, you know, been held back by all these believes that they, they, they're not going to be as good as their male counterparts. So there's a lot of work that we do with one-on-one -on -one mentoring. We've got top CEOs, both men and women, or former CEOs who are retired and want to help women progress, that support these women on advancing their career and understanding their value and the fact that, you know, stretch assignments are good. You may not feel ready for this job that is being offered or this board seat that's being proposed to you, but just go ahead, do it, learn, accept that you don't have 100% of the skill set, but it's okay. We tend to want to wait till we're absolutely perfect before we do something, whereas men, they're very comfortable just diving in head first, and this is where their success comes from. So it's learning from these traits and, and, and adapting some of those more masculine traits and keeping our femininity and our, you know, emotional intelligence and the way that we lead teams, bringing this together, being the best leader that a woman can be. So there's an aspect of coaching or mentorship when it comes Absolutely. to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is, because for the longest time, women tended to think that this was the situation and that maybe they can't change anything about it. It's nature. And so I like it when we can put more emphasis on younger women and going into schools. It's at age five that girls already start thinking that there's a difference between what they can do, what their capacities are, and the boys. So there's a responsibility at daycare and schools, university, that, you know, teachers, parents need to, you know, give everything that the girl needs to understand that she can be anything. When she's born, she thinks she can be anything. And then society somehow brings these uh, notions of being different, which is holding, holding women back. It all starts very young, doesn't it? Now, one of your organization's main goals is to improve the gender balance on corporate boards. You mentioned that France is one of the few countries uh, to have brought in legislation to try to increase female representation. Do you think that legislation is really the way to go, or is it quotas? What's the best way to tackle that? Well, definitely, you know, legislating is going to move the needle. It has in France, it has in the Scandinavian countries, and several European countries. It's been very powerful and very efficient. But if you look at the company holistically, uh, and they've changed what they had to, you know, they've done what they had to do to bring more women on the board, it doesn't mean that the executive committee and the rest of the company is being impacted. This is why we've created with McKinsey and Company a few years ago a certification, a parity certification, where we go into the organizations and measure what they've done to allow women to progress from entry level all the way to the executive committee and the board. And that is the only way, and that's nothing to do with legislation, right? It's really the goodwill of the organization with our support, where they're going to modify certain mechanisms or certain policies and procedures and, and change things to make the organization more female friendly.
Well, tell me more about that parity certification process. Is it something that's been successful with Canadian businesses? And is it something that can be transferred to other countries, to other industries? Absolutely. So highly successful. We started, it's going to be four years. We've certified about 60 organizations so far and in various industries. That's the beauty of it. Of it. So banking, insurance, uh, mining, tech. Uh, telecom, etc. And we um, look at the quantifiable and qual uh, quality and qu quantity. It's kind mm -hmm. of hard to translate <laughs> from French, but we look at both aspects and ensure that organizations not only have the right numbers, we know that it's a pyramid and there will be less and less women, but that they also have all the policies that are required to make this sustainable. Because sometimes you have a CEO who wants to change things and he will nominate a few women here and there, but then that can go away when the CEO leaves. So there needs to be some policies. And so then we rank them from bronze to platinum. We honor them at an annual gala, which they love. And we also uh, recognize their progress. Some organizations over the past three years have moved from bronze to platinum because we give them recommendations, best practices, and they implement them because they actually really want to reap the benefits of having more diversity. And a lot of companies actually all companies will tell you that they want to have more women at the executive level, but they, they, they don't know how to do it. But very often they don't even know where the gaps are or the magnitude of the gap. So how can you really work on that gap? So transparency can lead to action a little bit. Absolutely. Now, when we talk about gender equality in the workplace, whether it's a matter of pay or position or career advancement, one of the major issues becomes parenthood. It's something that we talk about a lot. Yes. Because many women see their career paths stall after taking maternity leave. How can we make progress? So there's... That's a reality that is never going to go away. Obviously, mothers will always be mothers. We are now in a phase, especially in Canada, more and more men are taking paternity leave, allowing their spouse to go back to work sooner. Our parental leave, our maternity leave is a whole year in Quebec. It's a very long time. If you have three children, this is three years that you're gone. So organizations can support these women during their maternity leave by, you know, keeping in touch and ensuring that they are well supported when they come back. Very often they return to work and they realize that this is just too difficult to, you know, there's no flexibility. There's, there's no understanding from, from her boss that her reality may have changed. And so also empowering the spouse, the male spouse, and making him a part of this so that, of course, while we're pregnant, it's only us. Giving birth, it's only us. But after that, it should be shared. And to this day, women still do two to three times uh, the, the work with the children and the house chores than men do. So it's, again, a, a mix of legislation and company responsibility and individual responsibility exactly. as well. Exactly. All three. Um, I'd like to ask your reaction to a tweet by Christine Lagarde. Yes. Uh, she, of course, was the first female head of the IMF. She's now the first female president of the European Central Bank. Uh, this was her first meeting uh, of the ECB's governing council. And you can see that with the exception of Lagarde herself in the yes. background uh, and the painted ladies on the wall, there's not a woman in sight. What kind of message does this send? Well, I've seen this tweet, actually, and, uh, you know, what, what I call this type of table is male, pale, stale. <laughs> so it is high time that this changes. And I just hope that individually these men realize that they need to do something to empower women to come in. Because what Christine Lagarde also always says is when a man tells me that he doesn't have any women on his board because he can't find them, that she in her little pocket has a list of women that she can hand to these men. So I too have a list. So if they're looking, they can call me, I can help them. <laughs> Switching gears, in the past two years, we've seen the Me Too movement sweep the globe. Uh, do you think that exposing this kind of sexual harassment and abuse in the workplace and in the streets will bring about change? Is it making women feel safer? Well, it's an extremely important movement um, and it has allowed women in terms of their progress because now they don't need to feel that they need to leave the organization if they're being sexually harassed by their boss. They can actually just talk about it. And, and I think it's been extremely helpful. But there's a backlash. Uh, some men in our mentoring program, for instance, will say, well, I'm not sure I'm comfortable continuing because... 
I don't want to be left alone with a woman. And I always say, well, then mentor two women. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another way of uh, going around it. Um, but it had to happen. It's crazy that it even took so long. And it's not completely eradicated, by the way. There are still episodes here and there. What's the next glass ceiling you'd really like to see cracked? Well, um, the American presidency would be a nice one. I've done uh, a couple of interviews with Hillary Clinton right after her defeat. And uh, although she's not ready to go back, we've got a few amazing women uh, right now that are uh, in that race. And I hope uh, America is going to be ready for a movement sometime soon. Politics often seems to be the ultimate yes. when it comes to that, doesn't it? Now, you spent off, uh, spent over two, two decades, rather, in the corporate world uh, before founding Women in Governance. How did your experience there set the path for, for what you're doing now? Oh, it is exactly why. I'm doing what I'm doing now. It's because I've had a very successful career in the corporate world with my background. I grew up in the Lebanese war. I arrived in Canada in my early 20s, very ambitious and didn't let anything stop me. But then I realized that although I thought that this was going to be more difficult for me, I realized I made it there and some of my Canadian born and raised friends weren't making it because they had all these sort of... Uh, they had the impression that they wouldn't be able to, to make it, whereas I just bulldozered my way. And this is why I decided that I wanted to do, wanted to do something to support these women to, to get there. I was uh, executive vice president of the largest Canadian medical expertise firm and uh, too often the only woman at the decision-making table. And the, you know, the, the passion that I had in me for justice and equality, which came to me from my years in the war, I translated that into wanting equality for women, allowing women to progress. And um, women in governance, I think, has its success because of that, you know, uh, that um, determination that, that I've had and the amazing team around me as well. Lots more work to do then. Yes. Caroline Codsey, thanks so much for joining us on France 24. Thank you, Kate. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's more news and headlines coming up. Thank you.